It was a dark winter night in Connecticut, and we were caught in a treacherous snowstorm. The snow kept falling quickly. Visibility was near zero, and we were heading downhill. Cars around us were skidding out of control, and my three young daughters were in the back seat. Their safety was entirely in my hands. How did I keep my family safe? How did I survive? Watch and listen to this story. And the lessons that apply when we are going through our major life storm. Stay tuned. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Angie Marie, a certified life coach, traveler, optimist, lover of people, lover of culture, and this is my YouTube channel. I'm so glad you chose to click on this video today. I don't know the situation you may be going through, but one thing I do know is that from time to time, we all have our storms to navigate. What I shared with you earlier is a true story of an experience I had after relocating from Jamaica to the US to Connecticut and being caught up in a snowstorm with my three young daughters in the back of the car. And the storm built up pretty quickly. It was after about after 10 p.m. at night. So there were visibility issues as well. I saw cars skidding in the snow. As someone from Jamaica, from the Caribbean, we do not have snow. It was an experience adjusting and learning how to navigate through that kind of storm. But I'm gonna share some things with you and I believe these things will apply even as you go through your personal storms in life because I use some of the same principles in dealing with my own storms. My storms with finances, relationship, health, whatever it is that I may face, obstacles that hit us from time to time, normal part of life, but how we handle them make a big difference. So let me just share something with you real quick. Like I said, the car was going downhill and it was scary but one of the things i recall is that when driving through ice when driving on ice or in slippery conditions like that you need to drive in the lowest gear possible no high gear one do not slam on the brakes so you need to you need to be calm because sometimes the temptation and the tendency is to think oh my gosh i need to speed through this one or two you think this is crazy I have, i'm gonna have to press quickly on the brake don't do that and I believe it's the same thing that happens to us if you're dealing with crises in your life. Go in a lower gear. Some of us tend to feel that, well, you're hurting so much, there's so much pain, you're gonna have to go fast. No, slow down, calm down, take some deep breaths, as I did too in, on that night. And there were more than one times where I found myself in, in pretty similar situations. But the one going downhill that night in Connecticut in that major storm is the one that stand out most to me. We think that we have to move quickly through this because it is too painful and we're scared. I was scared that night, to be honest, but guess what? Sometimes we have to let wisdom take over from the fear. Allow wisdom to take control when you're going through these difficult situations. Secondly, talk to God. I remember saying, God, you're the one who helped me in many other situations. God, I remember going through, going up Mount Diablo in Jamaica, going from Kingston to the western side of the country, uh, uh, doing job research work and so forth. Mount Diablo, Mount Russell, uh, navigating those big trucks, winding curves on, on those mountains, those hills, people speeding, driving crazy, but God, you helped me through. I recall saying, God, you're everywhere. You see me. You see what I'm going through now. Please dispatch some angels here to help me. You've helped me on narrow roads in Jamaica. We didn't have snow, but we had treacherous conditions. We had hurricanes, storms, and things we had to deal with. God, please, I don't have all the skills here. Please help me. And believe it, God did hear me and did help me. But there are some things I had to do also. The next thing we should not do is to feel that you have to call on others while you're going through the storm. And I'm thinking, you know, if I, what if I had picked up that cell phone and called my big sister and say, oh my gosh, I'm going through this storm, I'm so scared. 
would that have helped? It wouldn't have helped her and it wouldn't have helped me. Now, I know my sister would have stayed calm and be telling me, oh, take it easy. So, no, but that's not what I needed. I did not need that distraction. I needed my full capacity, mental and otherwise, to be able to focus and concentrate without having anyone influence me or distracting me in any way. Now, sometimes in our lives, we tend to do that. When we feel the pain, we're going through something, we call on other people and you start talking too much, telling them stuff. When you're the one in the situation, the one you need to speak to, guys, my friends, my loved ones, I love you, this is why I'm telling you this, talk to God first. I've seen situations where people have confided in others during their moments of distress and all it did was to make things worse because the person they confided in, for example, went on social media and started throwing shade, as they call it, on situations and the other person in the, let's say, a relationship observe and start feeling, wow, you know, this person is discussing our issues with other people and that just make matters worse. So we have to cultivate that discipline to wait Put the car in low gear. Take it easy. Do not hit that brake. Don't jam, don't slam on the brake. And don't speed, don't press on the gas. Just take it easy, calm down, calm down. Take time, it helps. The third thing that helps me all the time when I'm going through storms and dealing with this situation is remembering other times when I've gone through storms where I've said to myself, I've been up that Mount Diablo and Mount Russell Hills in Jamaica before in treacherous conditions and I made it through. And the same God who helped me through those mountains will help me through this snowstorm. So that faith where you recount previous experiences and you, you say in the same way you went through that, you're gonna go through this. I believe, um, again, my faith, I know someone in the Bible, David, who did that. He said the God who helped him overcome the lion and the bears will help him with this giant, Goliath. And it was that faith and that intensity, that passion, that was fueled by his recollection of how God helped him in the past, that helped him to overcome in the moment. Friends, I want to encourage you to do that as well. Now, as I said, I don't know the specific storm you're going through, but I know what storms and hardships and challenges do to us. We get worried, we get concerned. If it's our finances, relationships, someone who means a whole lot to us and you feel disappointed, you feel that you're about to lose a big part of your life, a big part of your heart. If you don't get that finances sorted out, how are you gonna live? But let me tell you, let's put these things into practice and see the result. During those moments, during those storms, we need our mental fortitude or toughness or resilience. And this is why I take a lot of inspiration from let's say countries and people I know who, whose tendency is resilience, strength, determination, mental fortitude. Like I mentioned Haiti all the time. We all know what they're going through right now. They've had major earthquakes, challenges, corruption in leadership, disappointments, assassination of their president. All sorts of things, guys, in, in the main, main city of Port of Prince. But yet, if you were to go, let's say, on social media now, you go on social media and you type in Haitian TikTok or something, guess what? You will see some of what's going on in terms of gangs and so forth. But let me tell you something. For the most part, you're going to see a happy, resilient people dancing, singing, celebrating their flag day. There's just so much culture there. Likewise, go to Ghana. If you can't go there physically, go there online on social media. You see the beauty, the calm, the peace. Go to Jamaica. Take inspiration from these places because they're there as beacons and examples for us that we can apply in our own lives when handling our own challenges. Absolutely. I want to invite you to share your own experiences. Let me know whether this video has helped you in any way. And, you know, God bless you. I pray that if you're handling some major trauma that you work on getting through it and never give up and take into account the principles I shared with you in this video. If you have not yet subscribed to this channel, friends, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. 
If you found this useful, please go ahead and like this video, share it. If you are a return subscriber, I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for checking my content out again. If you have subscribed and not yet hit that notification bell, please go ahead and hit the bell so that you can be alerted each time I share new content. Again, this is Angie Marie, and I'm so grateful that you spent these moments with me. I'm happy to see you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you soon in the next video.